Hello, it's Karen Berniston here with an assembly video for one of our die sets. This is die number 1240, the fence add-ons, and you can check out all of our die designs at karenberniston.com. The fence add-ons is perfectly sized to fit our landscape rectangle accordion die set to turn that into a fence-shaped accordion. And then we also have another add-on set called cupcake add-ons that will do the same thing. There are seven dies in the set, and you can absolutely use those pieces independently. And I'm going to start first just by assembling some flowers. So there is a tall stem. I'm going to add some glue up the middle of that, and then I'm going to attach to that the blue bonnet. Now, if you cut those blue bonnets out of other colors, they'll, they'll resemble other flowers, so they don't always have to be blue bonnets. But of course, I live in Texas, so I wanted them to be blue bonnets for my card. Then there is a die that will cut two kind of small generic flowers, and then there's a die that will cut two centers for those flowers, and then there's a die that will cut two stems for those flowers. So that's just a matter of assembling the pieces. In addition to the flowers, you also get a strip of grass. With the fence, the easiest would be just use cardstock because then it'll be the same on both sides. But I found this piece of pattern paper. I liked the wood grain on one side. The back was trees and meadows though. So what I did is I just cut the pattern paper big enough for the fence twice. And then I'm just going to use some adhesive to attach those pieces back to back. So that could be spray adhesive, it could be glue, or it could be a tape runner. But if you are using a tape runner, just make sure that you completely coat it with adhesive. With our dies, you can use any die cutting machine that can accommodate a wafer thin die. I am using a Spellbinders Platinum 6, and my favorite is to go a little bit on the diagonal. It just makes it a little easier to feed through the machine, and I think you get a better cut. I'm going to tape that into place so that it says stay straight with the wood grain. And then because I'm going through two layers of pattern paper, I'm just going to go ahead and hit it twice. So I'm going to go through and then back through. I am quite the collector of pattern paper and wood grain paper. I just cannot resist it. So I have lots of different wood grains in my stash. But if you didn't have such a thing, you could absolutely get the same look by just using plain cardstock and then maybe stamping a wood grain pattern onto it. One thing I like to do, it is optional, but I like to sandwich the mechanism of the landscape rectangle accordion between two fence posts so that you don't see it. So to do that, I'm going to need another one of those wide fence posts. So I'm doing that just out of a single layer of a scrap of the same wood grain paper. So in that case, I didn't go back to back with the paper because it's only single sided that I need. That's all that will show. And I just want to get one of those wide fence posts. And it doesn't matter if it's the one on the right or the one in the middle, they're both the same size. I just need to take my scissors and trim out the rest. And the only piece I'm interested in is that wide fence post. Okay, now I'm going to switch to the foundation die, which is the landscape rectangle accordion. I've die cut three of the pages out of cardstock. Now I ended up using 80 pound cardstock because it was the perfect color. I generally love the heaviest weight cardstock for accordions, but since I'm adding pattern paper to these, it won't matter, it'll be plenty strong. And since I do want to add pattern paper to each of the pages, I've already pre-cut my pattern paper to five and three quarters by three and a quarter so that it's just a little smaller than the page size and it will give me that little blue border around the edges. And what I'm going to do to make that fit the page is I'll use the die again. So I'll use my temporary removable tape. I'm using Scotch removable tape that comes in the blue box. And I put a couple pieces of tape so that when I flip it over to the die blade side, and I put my paper face down in the die. I'm just looking around the edges to make sure that I have a nice border. Then I can press against that exposed tape and that will hold it in place so that it doesn't shift as I die cut it. The goal is to have an even border around the edges of the pattern paper. And then I'll go ahead and run that through my die cutting machine. These are just decorative pattern paper frames for my pages, so I don't need the interior parts. I can take my scissors and trim those out at the pivot points. And now I'm left with a frame that will leave a little shadow on the outside and will perfectly match the curve on the inside. Okay, in order to add the fence, I need to remove the majority of the rectangle. So the first thing I do is I make sure that the tabs are facing to the right. So the tab on the rectangle is to the right and the page. Then I'm going to rotate that rectangle so it's perpendicular to the frame. I'm going to hold the left side of that rectangle while I take my scissors right up next to the pivot point and cut across from pivot point to pivot point. And that's going to remove that half of the rectangle. It's got the tab attached. I don't need it. 
Now I'm right-handed, so I'm just going to flip it over so that I'm still cutting easily with my right hand and I'm going to trim the left side of the rectangle away, leaving myself a thin sliver of rectangle that is no wider than the wide fence post. Okay, so now I can glue that wide fence post onto that bit of blue that's left. So I need a strong glue for that. I'm using Lineco Neutral pH Adhesive in my fine tip bottle, and we do sell both of those items on our website. Okay, now I can add my fence. So I'm covering up the glue with my center fence post and I'm centering it top to bottom, and I'm looking out on the right side. There's a wide fence post on the right, and then two little tabs next to it that should touch the interior frame. But the main thing is that, that center fence post, the one that's covering up the glue, needs to not pass the pivot points on the right so that it can still rotate. So you can see that I could push this fence through the opening and it'll rotate or if it depends on the page, but this one's gonna be the first page, so it's actually gonna rotate the other direction. Now that may mean clearing the pivot point at the bottom with a fence post. So just rotate it until it makes a satisfying click, and then you should be able to rotate it no problem either way. Now, if I turn it over, I can clearly see where that single wide fence post needs to go. I'm just going to add my glue to the back of it and then attach it over the center fence post on the back of the fence, and that way it will cover up the mechanism and you no longer see it. So definitely optional. It'll work even if you don't cover it up. If you're making a ton of these, maybe you don't wanna take the time to cover up the center fence post on the back, but it does make for kind of a clean look when you do. Okay, so that's my first page, and what's going to connect it to the next page is going to be these two little tabs next to the wide fence post on the right. So if I fold those to the back, most likely, they're going to separate because remember I've got two pieces of pattern paper glued back to back. I'm not going to fight those and try to keep them glued together. I'm just going to trim off the back one. The front one is plenty to use as tabs. Okay, so if you're using cardstock, that's not going to be an issue, but that would only be an issue if you've got two pieces glued back to back. Now for the frames itself, there is a tab for that as well. It's the blue cardstock tab. It has a score line and I'm going to work that in both directions. Then I repeat that two more times since I'm making a three page fence accordion. Okay, for my page three, I don't need tabs. So I don't need the long tab on the blue page and I don't need the little short tabs on the fence. I'm gonna trim only about half of them off though because they're also decorative. And the main thing is I just wanna make sure that they're not catching on the edge of the frame. So I just trimmed a little bit of those off, but then as far as the blue tab out on the right, I'll just trim the whole thing off. And I just do that with scissors. You could use your trimmer, but I find it just as easy to use scissors. All right, so that's only page three. I still need all my tabs on page one and two. Okay, now I'm going to start joining these pages together. So I need a strong adhesive in the long tab that's on page one, and then that's going to attach to the side of page two. So you always attach a tab to a side. You don't attach a tab to a tab. And these two pages, it will be a valley fold between those two in the finished card. So I can fold those down face to face, work that tab. Eventually these two fences are going to join together using those tabs, but I'm not going to do that yet because I want to decorate it first. Now I'm going to attach page three. So I need adhesive on the tab that's on page two. And this time it's going to be a mountain fold between the pages. So I can connect the pages in that way. So just bringing that side right up to the fold line and making sure everything is straight. So since there's a mountain fold in the front right here, the fences will join behind it with a valley fold. And then the opposite over here. So the fences will join in front with a mountain fold. So you always have alternating folds with accordions. It is much easier to do the decorating when they're flat though. So I'm not going to join fences just yet. Instead, I've cut three more of those paper frames, just like I did for the front, and I've glued them to the back. Then I turn it over to the front again, and now I'm going to do some decorating. I cut two of the rectangles out of the landscape rectangle accordion to be the place where I can sign the card and write a personal greeting. Now, since I have Dry's Clear adhesive, I'm just gonna coat the back of it with adhesive and glue it to the fence, realizing that the glue will go through the fence and onto my mat in some of the areas, but that doesn't bother me. So just make sure you're working on a scratch paper if, um, if you're doing it my way. Otherwise, you'll have to be more careful about where you put your adhesive. You can cut the grass in half. That can be a good look, you know, maybe one out on one end and one out on the other. Basically from here, you're just decorating with grass, with blue bonnets, with flowers, just wherever you want them to go. 
I decided to make mine a hello card. So I'm using our big script hello. And when I glue that on, I just want to make sure that the tail of the H doesn't extend any further than the tabs on the left. And that's just to make sure that nothing gets in the way when I join those two fences together. And when I'm decorating, I tend to just use a line of glue along the bottom of the grass and add that first. And then it's really easy to tuck the flowers in behind the blades of grass and glue those to the fence. Okay, so here's my finished decorated fence card, and now I'm ready for final assembly. First thing I like to do is get the folds between the pages worked correctly. So valley between the first one, mountain between the second two. And then if I was doing more pages, I would just carry on going valley, mountain, valley, mountain, so and so. Okay, so now I need to rotate these fences so that they will come together and basically make a straight line through the album. So you can see that once I've connected those, they will just shoot straight through. Okay, and then now I just need to use the tabs to join the fences together. So I'm going to add the adhesive to the two small tabs that are on that first fence. Then I'm going to bring the tabs for the second fence over and on to that adhesive. So just joining those two together. And then I'm just going to pinch those for a second to make sure that they set up. I definitely prefer glue for this. You know, those are pretty small tabs and you do want it to hold up. So then once the glue has set up, then what I can do is just carefully close that those first two pages. So the fences are going to, to close basically opposite to the frames and you'll have kind of alternating zigzags. And I'm just checking that my tabs are connected. And now I have those first two pages. Okay, so then page three, I'm going to use the tabs again. I'm gonna get in there and add the adhesive to those tabs on the right side of the second page. And then I'm going to bring the two tabs for the third page into that adhesive. And I'm just gonna flip it over and do it from this side. So it's a little easier to show on camera, but basically I just need to get those tabs folded over the back of the third fence and onto the back and then just give it a good pinch to get it to set up. And that would be the process going forward if I had more pages. I could just keep alternating whatever, if it's a valley in the back, it's a mountain in the front and so forth. So you have alternating zigzags between the fences and the frames. And then just giving that a good press in the closed position. Now I have my finished three page landscape accordion fence card. Now the size of that is three and a half by six. So that means that it will fit in that shorter business envelope. If you don't get too many pages, if you get too many pages, then you probably need to go up to a slimline envelope or maybe even an A7. But if it's just a two or three pager, you can definitely fit it in one of those shorter business envelopes for mailing. I love how pretty this card ends up looking. It's such a beautiful display piece and you really can customize it because you're choosing your number of pages and you're also choosing the styling. So that fence could really be used year round for any occasion, any holiday. You can also explore making mixed accordions, which means leaving some of the rectangles whole or half of the rectangle in place and then mixing it in with fences. So this project, this Miss You three page mixed accordion, that has a video for it. So I will be sure to link it at the end of this one. I love to end assembly videos with some inspiration from our talented design team. Here's a great four page mixed accordion by Suzanne Smith. The fourth page is a rectangle. And I like that it's a Halloween happy birthday theme. Here's a three page mixed accordion by Frances Byrne and notice how she styled those blue bonnets in yellow. Nikki Foden made a four page fence accordion and then decorated the fences with our tiny gnomes and lots of our flower dyes. I love this card. For this three page mixed accordion, Lois mixed in a vine die taken out of our monkey and lion die set. Here's a two-pager by Lois, half rectangle, half fence with the tiny gnomes and some flowers. Another three-page mixed accordion, this one by Lois, in a Christmas theme. The fence does not have to be used only with a landscape rectangle accordion. Here's a great example by Sue Small Kreider of a top fold pop-up card in a summer theme where that fence is the backdrop. Jen Webster created an entire dog's backyard on this wonderful three-page mixed accordion. I love Suzanne Smith's dangling purple flowers on this great three-page fence accordion. 
And then another great three-page fence accordion by Suzanne Smith. And I just like all of the different flowers that she added to the fence. And finally, a wonderful two-page garden-themed fence accordion by Fran Sabat. The fence add-on die set is available now from a lot of your favorite local and online retailers, as well as from our website, KarenBerniston.com. Thanks for watching. If you click on the website link, you'll go to KarenBerniston.com, where you can purchase these dies as well as find links to our other social media accounts. You can subscribe to this YouTube channel and check out some of my other videos. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.